Okay, so this is problem 3-3.3. So again, this is calculus-based results. And the reason this is calculus is because instead of, uh, well, actually you find the velocity and acceleration, we use derivatives instead of, uh, so we, we can find instantaneous velocities given that the position vector is defined. So what we have is the position vector r. And its position can be represented by this equation. So we have 4 centimeters plus 2.5 centimeters per second squared times t squared. And that is the, the uh, x component of the position. And it's talking about a video game because, you know, you'd have to specify things as equations to map them. And the reason you use the centimeters instead of meters is because it's for a screen. So then we have the y position, which is going to be 5 centimeters per second times t t is the time times the unit vector j. So you could say that r sub x is 4.0 centimeters plus 2.5 centimeters per second squared times t squared. And r sub y is 5.0 centimeters per second times t. So that's doing it in terms of unit vector notation. This is just breaking it up into components. So it says, find the magnitude and direction of the dot's average velocity between t equals 0 and 2. So since we're talking about average velocities, we actually calculate the position. So what we do is we calculate the position vector at t equals 0. And we'll do the same thing at t equals 2. So if we plug in t equals 0, we'll get 4 centimeters times i vector plus 0 centimeters times the j vector. Because this term's for, this term goes to 0 when t equals 0, because you get 0 squared times that, and then 5 times 0 is 0. So that's, that's the position vector at t equals 0. And then you do the same thing at t equals 2. So when you plug 2 in there, you get 4.0 centimeters plus 2.5 centimeters per second squared times, times t, which is 2 seconds squared times i plus 5.0 centimeters per second times t, which is 2.0 seconds, times j. So when we get there, so 2 squared is 4, 4 times 2.5 is 10, 10 plus 4 is 14, so we get 14 centimeters i plus 10, 5 times 2 is 10, 10 centimeters j. So that's the position vector at t equals 2. So the average velocity vector, so uh, the average velocity vector between t equals 2 and t equals 0, all you do is you take, the, you subtract these, so you take the r vector at t equals 2, and you subtract the uh, position vector at t equals 0, and you divide by 2 seconds. So that's the change in position per change in time. Because we're taking the actual values and not taking any derivatives, then we just have that. So what we have is 14 centimeters i plus 10 centimeters j. So that's the vector at t equals 2. We subtract the vector at t equals 1. So we get that. So this is, this is basically the delta r vector. 
So you do the I components. 14 minus 4 is 10. So we get 10 centimeters I plus 10 centimeters J. So that's my delta R vector. Therefore, my average velocity vector is going to be this divided by 2 seconds. So my average velocity vector is going to be 5.0 centimeters per second I plus 5.0 centimeters per second j. So that's the average velocity vector. Let me just check to make sure this is right. OK, so we're doing 3.3. Uh, OK, so we haven't actually gotten the answer yet. So th those that's the average velocity in terms of the vector. What they're asking for is um, find the magnitude and direction of the average velocity. So the magnitude of the average velocity vector is equal to the square root of 5.0 centimeters per second squared. That's the I component. And then the J component. So we'll get um, basically the square root of 50. So we get 7.1 centimeters per second. And because they are both the same magnitude, if we were to plot that vector, the average velocity vector, with the, the, uh, the tail of the vector at the origin, it would look something like this, where this distance is 5 centimeters per second, and this distance is 5 centimeters per second. And so this distance is 7.1 or 7.07 .07 centimeters per second. And so the angle is 45 degrees, because it's, it's a triangle with two equal right triangle with two equal sides. So we could say theta, in this case, is 45 degrees. And I think that's the answer that I give you in the back of the book. 7.1 centimeters per second, 45 degrees. OK, so that's the first part of the problem. The second part says, find the magnitude and direction of the instantaneous velocity at three times. So what to, to find the instantaneous velocity, we, we're going to take the derivative of the r vector with respect to time. And the r vector, the derivative, so you do each component separately. So the derivative of the x component is going to be 2 times 2.5 centimeters per second squared times t times i. So what I've done is the derivative, if you look at the equation, it's 4 centimeters. Well, the derivative of a constant is 0. The derivative of t squared is 2t. So that's where you get the 2t, and then you've got the constant here. Uh, the second part, the derivative of 5 centimeters per second times t is going to be just the derivative of t with respect to t is 1. So then you just get 5.0 centimeters per second times the j vector. So that's the, this is the instantaneous velocity vector is the derivative of the instantaneous uh, position vector with respect to time. So then all you have to do is to evaluate the velocities at the different times, you just plug it in. So if you plug t equals 0 in there, you'll get 0i plus 0j. Actually, no, that's not right. You get 0i, because put t equals 0, but the uh, j velocity is constant centimeter per second j. The instantaneous velocity vector t equals 1. Second is we plug 1 in there, so you'll get 1 times 2 times 2.5, which is 5, 5.0. And 5 seconds, or 
one second cancels out with the one of the seconds in the denominator, so you end up with five centimeters per second I plus five centimeters per second J. And then the instantaneous velocity vector t equals two seconds. You plug two in here. So two times two is four, times two point five is ten. So you get ten point zero centimeters per second I plus five point zero centimeters per second J. So this does involve T. So that those are the three vectors. Now um, that's in the components. What they're looking for is the magnitudes. So, so we have to figure out the uh, direction. So let's just let's just draw these vectors. So here's my coordinate system. So the first vector has zero i. It's five centimeters j. Okay, so that's that's a t equals zero. This is um this is y. This is x. This is the velocity vector. Actually, it's not. This is uh yeah. This would be b sub y, and this would be b sub x. Okay, so this one is um, zero i five j. Well, the next one is five and five, so that's like that. So that goes there. And the third case is ten and five. So it's, you notice that the y component is always the same if I do this correctly, which let me just draw a horizontal line so they are all the same. So this one's going to come up to there. And then, then that one comes up to there. So those are the, this is at t equals 1, this is t equals 2, this is t equals 0. So uh, this one's going to have 45 degree angle. This one is going to be a little bit different. So uh, let's do t equals 0. The magnitude of the velocity vector is just 5, because there's only one component. And the angle theta is 90 degrees because it's pointing. So it's the angle with respect to the positive x component axis. Okay. T equals one. The magnitude of the velocity vector is five squared plus five squared. Take the square root. We know that is 7.1 centimeters per second, and the angle is 45 degrees because you have a triangle with equal sides, one and one, you get 45 degrees. And then the final one, we actually have this triangle, this velocity triangle. So uh, at t equals 2, the magnitude of the velocity vector is equal to the square root of 10 centimeters per second squared plus the y component, five centimeters per second squared. So you get 10, 10 squared plus five squared. Take the square root, 11.2. So the magnitude is 11.2 centimeters per second. And theta is the inverse tangent of 10 over Actually, it's really around 5 over 10. So the y component is 5. The x component is 10. So basically, it's the inverse tangent of 0.5, which is 26.6 .6 degrees. So this angle here is 26.6. This angle is 45 degrees. This angle is 90 degrees. And I think that's the right answer. Okay, so that's how it works.